Okay, here's another optimization problem taken from the same source, namely uh, Calculus 5th Edition, Swakowski Late Trig Version. Page 186. And the problem reads, the strength of a rectangular beam is directly proportional to the product of the width and the square of the depth of a, a cross-section. Cut the uh, find the dimensions of the strongest beam that can be cut from a cylindrical log of radius A. So one thing they haven't quite told you is that there is that you can approximate this log as a cylinder and it's got a radius of lowercase a. Alright, so again first thing you want to do is figure out what the problem is asking you for. What are your unknowns? And in order to find the unknowns, you look for the question or you look for the command. Find the dimensions of the strongest beam that can be cut from the log. Uh, of a, of, from the log. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find dimensions, and our two dimensions are depth and width, the radius is fixed. We can't make the log any bigger, but we can adjust the depth and the width of the beam that we cut from this log. So, uh, among our knowns is that your radius is A, and that's going to be a constant. Our unknowns are that uh, the unknowns that we're trying to solve for are the values of width and depth that maximize the strength which we'll call S. Okay, other knowns require a little bit more um, imagination. So if you look at a cross-section, in other words, if you look at this log head-on, what you see is this. You've got a circle, and inside of that circle is going to be some sort of rectangle inscribed inside the circle. The circle has a radius A, but I'm going to draw that radius in a particular place because you know that that corner, that corner of the rectangle, touches the perimeter of the circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a radius that hits that combined point. We also know that the dimension in this direction is the depth, which we'll call D, and the dimension in this direction is the width, which we'll call W. Now, you might see where I'm going with this. If you zoom in on this portion of the rectangle, what you will see is this. You'll see the corner of the rectangle, a radius A. This dimension here is going to be not W because we're going from the center out to the corner so this is going to be W over 2 and this dimension over here is not going to be D because we're only going from here to here so that's going to be D over 2 and if you draw a right triangle out of all of this in other words, you draw that right triangle. 
you can actually, we're getting into formulas at this point, but one of the formulas that you can deduce from this problem is that using the Pythagorean theorem, w over 2 squared plus d over 2 squared equals a squared. So this is just a squ uh, one leg squared plus another leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. All right, that's one thing you can deduce. Another thing you can deduce is the mac uh, maximum and minimum values for D and W. So again, looking at a cross section here, if you've got a rectangle inscribed in this circle, then if you were to make D as big as possible, get some maximum D going here, then the beam would look like this. And you would end up with the situation where D equals 2A and W equals 0. Similarly, if you were to maximize W, you would end up with a situation like this. If we make the width as wide as possible, we'll end up with a beam like this, where your D is equal to 0. In other words, you have a beam of 0 depth and a width of 2A. Now, neither of these is actually achievable because as soon as one of your dimensions becomes 0, you end up with something that is not a three-dimensional object. So we know that the range for both D and W is going to be between 0 and 2A. So let's see, we're keeping track of this in green. So 0 is going to be, uh, or D is going to be between 0 and 2A. We also know that uh, 0, uh, W is going to be between 0 and 2A as well. Last but not least, you know that at each of these extremes, you get a volume of 0, right? Because we have, um, if we were to construct something with width 0 or depth 0, it would have a volume of 0. So in this case, we've got volume equals 0. And in this case, we also have that the volume is equal to 0. In other words, at our endpoints, or actually at the limit of our endpoints, um, our volume is equal to zero. And since uh, oh wait, no, it's not volume that we are trying to optimize. We are trying to optimize strength. So forget about everything I said about volume. Another thing is they they said is that the strength. Let's do this in red. Okay, they said the strength of a rectangular beam is directly proportional to the product of its width and the square of its depth. Okay, so our other formula is going to be that the strength is equal to some constant we'll call k. That's our proportionality constant. You have to include a proportionality constant whenever you see you have you're saying up uh, some sort of proportion directly proportional to the product of, all right, product means we're going to be doing multiplication, its width and the square of its depth. So strength is going to equal k times w times d squared, which ironically spells squid. Now, looking at uh, again, getting back to our two extreme examples, if we were to throw w equals 0 into the strength equation, 
we would get a strength of zero. So at one extreme, we get a strength of zero. At the other extreme, same thing, because at this extreme, we have a depth of zero. The depth of zero into here, that gives us a strength of zero. Okay, so what I'm saying is that all of our endpoints give you all of our endpoint values give you a uh, a beam with a strength zero. And remember, testing the endpoints is an integral part of using the uh, extreme value theorem. Okay, let's get back to the formulas here. Okay, this is our formula for strength. And right now, it has the same problem that we ran into previously, namely that it has two variables, width and depth. K is not a variable, it's a constant. Okay? But nevertheless, we cannot have both width and depth in our equation. We need to eliminate one of those, and we're going to use this equation on top to express either width or depth in terms of the constant A. So let's take this derivative of the, uh, or the, this formula which was derived from the Pythagorean theorem, and actually expand it out a bit, so we get w squared over 4 uh, plus d squared over 4 is equal to a squared multiply through by 4, so we get w squared plus d squared equals 4a squared, and then subtract w squared from both sides, so d squared equals 4a squared minus w squared. Now from this point, I could go on to take the square root, but notice that over in the equation that we're looking at, we got a d squared. And we got a d squared here, so this is sufficient for substitution. So if we take this equation for d squared and drop it into the squid formula, we end up with strength is equal to k times w times the quantity 4a squared minus w squared. In other words, instead of just taking out d, I took out all of d squared and replaced it with that. You could have gone on to take the square root, but then you'd just be going on and squaring again. Or you could even solve this by uh, isolating w out of this equation and then substituting it into the w in the s equals kwd formula, uh, kwd squared formula. I found this to be the easiest way to handle it. Expanding this out, you get strength is equal to k times w, uh, oh, whoops, no, not quite, uh, 4a squared times k times w minus k times w cubed. By the way, in physics you're often dealing with a sort of alphabet soup like what you're dealing with here. When you are doing that, one uh, very useful habit to get into is some of, your out, uh, some of your letters are going to stand for constants and some of them are going to stand for variables. Put the variables last. So a even though that's expressed as a letter, it's actually a constant. Remember, we said we couldn't change the radius of the log. K, that's our strength proportionality constant. Again, it is a constant. W, that's a variable. K, constant. W cubed, variable. All right, so now we've got things to the point where we can apply the power rule. So ds dw is going to be 4a squared times k minus 3kw squared, setting this equal to 0. 
in order to find our critical points, we get uh, 0 equals 4a squared k minus 3kw squared. The k's are, co uh, are a common factor, and so these all cancel out. And you get that 0 is equal to 4a squared minus 3w squared. And then you can go ahead and say that three w squared equals four a squared, and that means that giving myself a little bit more room here, uh, w squared is equal to. four-thirds a squared and that means that W is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 3 times a. Now normally when we take a square root you have to consider both positive and negative values but you can't have a positive value for W. W is width. Width has to be positive. Sorry, you can't have negative values for W uh, because width has to be positive. All right, so this is uh, one of our answers, uh, or it could be if everything else works out. We need to do two things. Now, thing number one is we need to check to make sure that this really is a maximum value. And then thing number two is, remember, back at our unknowns, we, we're not just trying to solve for the value of W. We need the values of W and D that maximize S. Okay, so first we got to check the maximize S part, and then we got to find the D. Okay, let's work on the, um, uh, let, let's work on the, finding the value, uh, finding out whether w is a maximum or not. By the way, uh, 2 divided by square root of 3, my calculator tells me that that is 1.15, if you prefer decimals. Okay, I'm out of space on this page, so I'm going to recopy the derivative formula over to the other page, and then we'll apply, uh, figure out whether uh, at this critical point things are increasing de or decreasing on either side of it. Okay, just a reminder to figure out whether you have a minimum or a maximum. One of two ways to do that is to test a value uh, before your critical point and a value after your critical point. You have a maximum when you go from a positive derivative to a negative derivative. In other words, when you go from increasing to decreasing. So if our critical point occurs at 2 over the square root of 3a, that's our critical point right here, uh, a value that's less than that is just 1 times a, and a value that's more than that, but still within our range of 0 to 2a, is 3 halves a. So we're going to be testing these values and seeing what happens. So when w equals a, then we get ds dw is going to be equal to 4 times k times a squared minus 3 times k times a squared. And since these are like terms, this gives us k a squared. And just a reminder what exactly this alphabet soup means, k is our proportionality constant for strength, and since strength has to be a positive number, the proportionality constant has to be positive. So k is positive. a is the radius of the log, radii and all dimensions have to be positive as well, so we got a positive number times a positive number, and that is going to give us a positive derivative for values 
uh, at w equals a, and in fact a positive derivative at all values within the domain where uh, a is less than, uh, where the width is less than 2 over the square root of 3 times a. <clears throat> Next, we're going to try w equals 3 halves a. And so that means that ds dw is equal to 4 times k times a squared minus 3 times k times w squared, and w is going to be 3 halves a, so that's going to be 3 halves a squared. And so ds dw is going to be, uh, this first term doesn't change at all, and the second term comes out to 27 over 2 times ka squared and factoring out the k uh, the common term the ka squared twenty seven over two that's uh, about twelve maybe thirteen or something like that yeah thirteen and a half so this is just pausing at this point. Again, k is positive, a squared is positive, but the 4 minus 27 halves, that's going to be negative, and so this is going to give us a big fat negative number. And so we find the pattern that is characteristic of a maximum, which is that before the, uh, before the critical point, the derivative is increasing, and after uh, the, the derivative is positive, and after the critical point, the derivative is negative. So, this tells us that when w is equal to 2 over the square root of 3a, s is maximized. Okay, so we got value of w, which maximizes s. Now we've just got to take care of this last part, find the corresponding value of d. Now, um, I'm actually going to... Well, I don't want to uh, confuse things more than necessary and only save a couple seconds of work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, take any equation that includes uh, both a uh, both w and d and substitute our, our our value for w back into it. So looks like this equation is our best bet. In fact, the d is already isolated. Remember, though, we are not solving for d squared. We're solving for d to the first power. So we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra on this. Okay, so I carved out a little bit of room for myself on this page and dropped the d squared equals 4a squared minus w squared formula onto here. And I'm going to substitute w into this now and isolate d out of it. So d is equal to 4a squared minus the quantity 2 over the square root of 3 times a squared. And so this, uh, oh, whoops, don't forget that d is squared. Uh, d squared is going to be 4a squared minus 4 yeah, four-thirds a squared. And let's see, four minus four-thirds is going to give you 
2 and 2 thirds, which is, let's see, that's 8 thirds. And take the square root of both sides, again keeping in mind that both D and A have to remain positive. And so this gives you uh, 2 times the square root of 2 over 3 times A. So that's our value for D, that's our value for W, and we have proved that, uh, we've also proved that S is maximized for these particular values. Okay, that's it for optimization problems that I'm going to solve. Uh, I hopefully will be able to generate two links on, uh, two annotation links to the two other Khan Academy videos, two, maybe three, let's see, how many does he have? Uh, yeah, actually, three other, three or four other um, optimization videos that Khan produced. And the only thing that you are not expected to do is prove that uh, the function is either maximized or minimized using the second derivative test. So as soon as he starts talking about second derivatives, ignore what he's saying. Other than that, they're actually pretty good problems. Let me give myself a blank screen in order to put these links up. All right. Like I said, these are optional, but if you feel that you need more help with this, go ahead. Sorry, when I was reviewing the video, I saw one error that I made, and that is right here. When I started with uh, when I started with three halves uh, a squared, and made that and, and expanded that out, I should not have gotten 27 halves. I should have gotten 27 quarters. And so that needs to change here as well. But the good news is that the rest of the logic still applies. 4 minus 27 over 4. 27 over 4 is uh, 6 and 3 quarters. So this quantity inside the parentheses will still remain negative, And everything else I said after that will remain true. Uh, S is still maximized at the point um, 2 over the square root of 3A.